Hello there everybody, I'm going to be taking you through um, a basic calligraphy script called Unseal Hand and it's a really nice one for first time calligraphers to try and um, there are only 26 um, characters or letters of the alphabet to do, there's no uppercase or lowercase so you're just going um, for a straightforward A to Z and the script itself, um, it's a nice one for the North East because it is kind of that old um, kind of monastic style script um, so you think of the Lindisfarne Gospels and those kind of historical religious texts um, it's a style of lettering that's very much taken from those so it's a, a nice one to, to, to do here at the Word and in South Chineside. So the kits that you've been given, you'll have an envelope that's got all of your worksheets in and they are to write on obviously direct and um, you will have your pen and a calligraphy ruler so I'll show you in a second what to do with that. So the um, pen itself, um, it's just like an ordinary fountain pen so I don't know, it might have been a while since you've ever used a fountain pen if, if you've used one at all um, so I'll just quickly show you grab the pen and you just unscrew the barrel there there'll be an ink cartridge inside so if you just pop the ink cartridge in there like that and you'll hear a click screw the barrel back on and there you go they are brand new so they might take a little bit of breaking in and um, usually what I do is just give it a little run um, back and forth on some paper and um, you might need to just run it under um, a warm tap and um, sometimes the warm water helps get the ink flowing as well but um, yeah they are brand new so just give it a little bit of time for the, the ink to actually flow through from the ink cartridge um, to the nib but the nib itself is a, it's a broad edge nib and um, which is used for many traditional calligraphy styles so foundational hand italic and unseal script um, so it is like, like I've said like a regular fountain pen but what's different about it is it's got that kind of squared broad edge tip to it and how you hold the pen and how you angle that nib on the paper um, will get the thick and the thin lines that um, differentiate calligraphy from regular handwriting so as you're writing as long as you're holding that nib steady you'll get a really nice flow of thick and thin lines when you come to do the alphabet. So for the warm-up exercises, you need to hold your nib and run it along at a 45 degree angle so you don't kind of hold it flat, um, vertical or horizontally. You've got to hold it as if the pen's going to kind of disappear towards the corner of the page. But you'll see that if you're holding it and imagining the right hand of the nib pulling the left hand through and if you run it up, you'll get a thin line and then if you hold that nib steady but then go down from the top line to the bottom line you get that thick line so you can kind of give it a thin and then a thick as long as you're holding that steady that's what the pen's going to do for you so you can have a go doing some up strokes have a go doing some down strokes on a sort of diagonal and have a go just doing them vertically as well and then you can kind of do some slight waves so really just getting warmed up and having to play around with the pen you don't have to hold it in any sort of different way as to how you would hold a, a regular pen you just keep that nib at a nice steady angle and it should do all the hard work for you So before you start writing, just a quick note about the guidelines that you'll have noticed on the worksheets because they are drawn up a little bit differently to, um, I guess, lined paper. And what you have is three lines. You have the ascender line at the top, you have um, the X height in the middle and the descender line at the bottom. And all that does is keep your, keeps your writing really neat and really consistent. Drawing up your guidelines, um, it's all down to the nib width 
that you're using. So to um, draw up your guidelines, the quickest way to do it is by using the pen, you know, whichever pen you happen to be writing with at the time. And what you do is you just hold the pen on its side and give a little notch, and that's a nib width. So when you're drawing up lines for unshill script, you need two nib widths for your ascender, you need four nib widths for your X height, and then two nib widths for your descender. And then once you've got those up, you just grab a ruler and a pencil, and then you've got a top line there, then you count in two nib widths, there's your ascender, four nib widths, there's your X height, two nib widths, there's your descender. The other way to do it is by using the click through rule in your pack. And what you would do is just measure up. These are called nib ladders and these manuscript click through rulers have um, nib ladders already on them. So sometimes it might actually refer to the exact nib size that you're using. So you could just, like you would be ruling in centimetres or inches, go one, two, nib widths for the ascender, one, two, three, four for the X height, and then one, two for the descender. And then again, just rule those across. And the advantage of that is you don't have that nib ladder running up the side. So if you feel confident enough to be starting your Christmas cards or Christmas envelopes or Christmas gift tags, anything like that, you can rule up some guidelines on pretty much anything and then you would just rub them out lightly afterwards once the ink's dried. Okay. So now that you've got your guidelines, you've got your pen warmed up nicely, you're feeling quite confident with how the pen works, we can run through the alphabet. So the way I've done the worksheets is instead of just doing a A to Z, I've grouped the letters together in letter families, if you like, where you're kind of making the same strokes and you're making the same movements with the pen. So hopefully that just kind of helps the muscle memory kick in a little bit. And um, the way to think about calligraphy, I think, which really helps is think about it as drawing letters rather than writing them. So you're kind of building up the letters using a series of strokes rather than doing them in kind of all one movement like you would be with handwriting. So the first group of letters are um, the round letters. So you've got the O, the C, the E, the D, the G, the Q and the P. And for unshield script, for the warm-up exercises, we were holding um, the nib at a 45 degree angle. Unshield script, you need to drop that pen angle down to about 30 degrees. And um, if you do need to check that, there's a little um, 30 degree graph on your worksheets. And all you need to do is just run your nib along the dotted line and you'll know that that's at 30 degrees and then just hold that steady and transfer it over onto the paper. So the O, you start at the top of the X height and come round to the bottom of the X height and then stop. So you've got that kind of half moon shape and then back to the same starting position and you're closing that circle with the second stroke. So I'll just show you that again. You're coming round, just kind of bouncing off that bottom line, starting again at the top and coming round. And you're looking for that bean nice and round. Um, the Unchill script's quite a nice round um, script, so you don't want anything that looks too overly. So when you're coming out and making that first stroke, make sure that you're giving yourself enough room for it to be circular rather than oval. And that's your O. You see, you're starting with the same stroke to start off with at first. That little half moon shape again and then coming round, but obviously not the whole way round to form the C. There we go. And then the E, again, exactly the same little half moon start, coming round like on the C, and then just making a straight line back on yourself to close the ball of the E. So again, you can see there, that's coming in thick and then a nice thin line. And then the D, starting in the same position as the E. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either 
start in the ascender there and curve it round so you're starting in line with that first curved stroke there and then you're just arching that round or you can give it a little bit of a decorative flair if you like so instead of coming right over to the left you just come over midway and bring that down and round and that's just a sort of slightly more decorative or, or curvy ad And then your G is the same stroke as the C, with a little tail on the end. And then your Q and your P are a little different, so the Q again comes round like the C, and then you need to bring your pen in and a nice straight stroke. And then that little bit there, you're just lifting the pen off. It's not a deliberate flick. You're just lifting the pen off. And then the P is sort of the reverse of that. You're coming just below the top of the X height there, down and round into the descender. And then you've got that little reverse half moon that you use to close the yaw up. And you just bring that down to the bottom line because if you try and push to make it a full roundness, you're going to feel the resistance of the paper and the pen there. So you just finish it off with a third stroke at the bottom there. The next group of letters are the small ball letters. So that's the B, the R and the S. And the B will feel very strange to write because it's essentially a capital B. So you just come in with your nib just under the X height and then a nice straight line down. I tend to bring that out and then when you do the curves you've got something to aim for when you come back down there. You can also do it separately. A little bit like the P where you're bringing that third stroke in along the bottom. And the R, so again, that straight line from the top of the X height to the bottom of the descender, little ball, and then the kick out of the R. And then the S, which tends to be a lot of people's nemesis letter. The trick is to get that first curve So you don't want to come down too narrow. You're just going to end up with something quite long and thin. And we're looking for round and square in these shapes. So the next group of letters are letters with an arch. Um, so you've got your H and your M, and then you've also got the U and the Y in there as well. So the H is one of the few letters that comes up to the ascender with Unshield script. So it's a nice straight line from the top of the ascender to the bottom of the X height, from about there in the cross stroke, so just below the X height. And when you make that arch, it's just tucking it in nicely, so you get that nice natural point with your pen. And again, making sure it comes out nice and wide and nice and circular. And you've got your U, you've got a little leading stroke there and that little half moon shape again and then just a straight line from the top of the X height to the bottom of the X height. You can then adapt it to the Y, bring that straight line down and then curve it around to form the tail of the Y and then the M which I always think looks a little bit like claws. So you've got that little half moon shape again, but not quite as rounded, arching that round and then just picking up and trying to get these nice and parallel as well. Okay, then you've got the eye. 
and that is just a straight line with your lead in stroke and your lead out stroke from the top of the X height to the bottom of the X height and with unshill script there are no dots above the I or the J but don't worry if you do end up being tempted to put one in and then the J starts the same as the I but again you're coming into the descender and as you come down just move the pen ever so slightly to the left and you'll get that nice pointed finish and you've got the K again like the H starting in the ascender and coming down to the bottom of the X height and you've got that small ball at the top like in the R and then kicking out little loop and then just a diagonal kick out and then your L again like the B it looks like a capital L but it's just sitting within that X height it's not coming up into the ascender although you could depending on what you were writing if you felt that a little bit of height would make it look better you can bring the L up into the ascender as well and then you've got the F so again nice straight vertical line from the top of the X height to the bottom of the descender and you can arch it over and give it a cross stroke or you could just do it straight as well and then the T, again, there's a couple of ways you can do the T. And again, this does look just like a capital T, like the B's and the L's do. I tend to do the top stroke first, and then you know that you're getting the down stroke in the middle. You could also do the stem of the T with that a little half moon curve on it too. That tends to be the one I levitate to. Okay, so the last group of letters are the diagonal letters. So you have your A, which is a nice diagonal stroke, so not straight, which is probably what you're used to writing. From the top of the X height to the bottom of the X height, and then about halfway up, that's the ball of the A. If you try and do it, too small it's going to make the letter look a bit unbalanced so that's your A and then you've got your N so again nice straight line from the top of the X height to the bottom of the descender diagonal line down and again you're looking for that to be quite wide as well almost like a square as if it would fit inside a square and then you've got your V what helps with the V is on this second stroke here, you just steepen the pen angle a little, just so you get that nice thinner stroke here. And it's the same for the W. The X. So again, nice diagonal line like the slope of the A coming from the top of the X height to the bottom. Again, it's like thinking of the four corners of a square. And if you couldn't quite get the hang of the curve at the start and the finish, you can just do a straight line through. And then your final one is the Z. Going from the top of the X height, diagonally down, and it's a nice thin stroke. I'm thinking of the four corners of a square as you're doing it. So there you go, that's your 26 letters of the Unshill alphabet. Um, once you feel comfortable with the letters, um, try piecing them together to form some words, and then eventually you can move on to putting the words together into sentences, and um, just build it up bit by bit. Um, 
some little tips for um, practice. If you want to do some words, have a little think um, about an alphabet drill. So going through an A to Z of colours or an A to Z of boys' names or an A to Z of cities. Um, so that's quite, you know, sometimes you do get a little bit stuck for what to write when you've got a blank page. So that's quite a nice um, practice exercise. In your packs as well, you've also got um, a list of pangrams. Um, so they're really good for practice as well because they are sentences that include every single letter of the alphabet. So you're going to be able to get some X's and some Z's in there. And also what you'll find in your packs is I have put some pre-printed guide sheets because I know ruling up can be a little bit of a headache and if you're just trying to squeeze sort of 10-15 minutes practice in somewhere you don't always want to spend five minutes of that ruling up your guidelines and um, so if you want you can write directly onto that and um, there's lots of um, guideline generators online as well so if you just bash calligraphy guideline generator into a search engine it's going to bring up some different options for you and there's also some layout paper which acts a bit like tracing paper, but it is designed for use with ink, so it's not going to bleed. And what you can do is keep that as a master copy and then just pop your layout paper over the top and you'll be able to see the guidelines through. So another little time-saving tip for you there. And then hopefully you might be able to come up with something like this. Maybe you could make that the first thing that you write please do share it. I'd love to see how everyone comes along and if you have any questions or queries or if you're struggling with anything at all, um, you have got my um, card in your packs. It's got my website, my email address, my social media channels and things. So any questions at all, just give me a shout, but I hope you've enjoyed it.